Okay, so I um, had a bit of an interesting journey into dance, actually, because I gave up ballet when I was eight because I hated it so much. <laughs> um, and I was, it was that kind of sort of quite typical you know take your little girl to ballet but I hated it It was I was the wrong physique I didn't enjoy it at all so when I was about eight or nine I said I I don't like this I don't want to do it anymore and then I started dancing again when I was about 20 um through my degree so my degree was actually in theatre and literature at Lancaster University um and I had no idea that I would be embarking on any kind of dance activity at all so I came at contemporary dance through physical theatre Uh, that's how I kind of stumbled across it um, through my degree and at the end of my degree uh, it was suggested to me that I go to Laban or the place which were alien places to me I didn't know what they were so uh, I took a bit of a year out to to have a think about why I was going to go and do this training Um, and uh, during this year out I did a lot of voluntary work which has been quite key to my progression really like getting involved in lots of different organizations Leanne's here hello Leanne (laughs) sorry I'm late guys (laughs) um I've just started talking Leanne about my journey so it's good to see you um yeah so I so during my year out I decided to volunteer for lots of different kinds of organizations and do continue sort of dance training so fortunately I was London based so I had lots of dance classes on my doorstep and stumbled across the community dance postgraduate diploma at Laban, which is a contemporary dance conservatoire based in London and decided that, that is what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a community practitioner. So I've never wanted to be a performer um, or a kind of professional choreographer. I've always wanted to take contemporary dance and basically change people's lives through, through that art form. Um, so then I went to Lab and, and did an intensive year in, in focusing on community practice, but doing all my kind of technique and choreography and things like that. Um, and that was a massive springboard into um, what happened next. Uh, so once I had kind of Laban on my CV, if you like, I was able to apply for, for jobs. And I think that was kind of quite well regarded. So my first job was working for Southeast National Dance Agency. Um, obviously, we have Yorkshire Dance up here. So starting with a regional dance agency was 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 brilliant and I did lots of work as a youth youth practitioner so I mainly focused on young people and then as time went on um, I worked as a freelance artist with primary age secondary age I did GCSE BTEC A level I worked with early years um, I'd worked with disability and just the ball as the ball got rolling more and more sort of people found out about me and I found out about them and gradually I became quite busy and then I um, took on a part-time job as a dance development officer for Crawley Borough Council, based in a theatre. And that gave me the opportunity to start doing more project management, fundraising, partnership development. So I was, I was a practising artist, but I was also gaining the, the other side of the, the skills in the other, other side of things. Um, so understanding how to put a project together, understanding how you apply for funding for a project that you, you know, and having an idea in your head and going, I want to make this project happen and going from A to Z Um, and that was very useful for me uh, particularly now in my job now Um, following this I then got a job with Laban so I went back to Laban to their fancy building so I trained in their old building and then I went to work in their new fancy building um, as their education and community practitioner so I was responsible for delivering a majority of the education and community work for Laban so that was out a lot of outreach work in the communities around South East London um, and obviously classes that happened within um, within Laban and that really opened up my horizons again so I did a lot of collaborative work I worked with different art forms um, I worked with different companies I was given the opportunity to work with different artists choreographers and I was responsible for a lot of the um, youth work disability work primary work teaching um, and I did some really amazing projects um, with quite specific groups and I don't know if any of you know where Laban is based, but it's actually based in Deptford, which is um, surrounded by quite a lot of sort of areas of deprivation, lots of challenging kind of groups of, of young people that I was coming across. Um, so I was sent to work in, in quite a scary school <laughs> in West Dulwich, um, where young people were very familiar with gun and knife crime and drug abuse, all sorts of that kind of 
that kind of world. And I started to do more and more of that kind of work. I worked in a secure unit with young male offenders. I worked with looked after children and I found that work even more rewarding than all of the other community practice I'd done. There was something um, powerful in what that work was and going into a space where there was quite a lot of chaos and quite a lot of negative energy and turning that around into something artistic and something positive. It, it made sense to me. And I realized that that's where I was going. Um, and at the time I knew of the work of Dance United, I knew they were delivering work in prisons and they advertised a training course in Bradford. So off I went for a week in Bradford and got offered a job and that was about 13 and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't expecting there to be a job, but there was. And I started to work for Dance United um, on their 12 week academy program. Um, so that was specifically for young offenders in the community. So young people who were serving community Hi, orders. Mom. Sorry, Chris, a small toddler in my house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry about that um yeah so uh um their 12-week project was uh young people who were serving community orders for um offenses they committed committed and um <laughs> the joys uh, and that and that work was obviously the, the beginning of the journey for me for Dance United and since then so I became the Academy Director after a couple of years so I was responsible for um, that programme which we could talk about a little bit later um, and that journey has then led me to become the Artistic Director of Dance United Yorkshire and again we'll talk a little bit about what that that kind of progression is along along the road i have also kept doing quite a lot of my own freelance work because when you work with very challenging groups you kind of sometimes need to go and work with a group of kids that actually want to dance or a group of students that love to dance so i kind of have often taken myself off and worked for sort of yorkshire dance or phoenix dance northern school and done kind of youth projects and other things where you feel like you get fed in a different way um and uh I've also done some international projects, which have also been really exciting to feed me as an artist. So I've been to South Africa, Namibia, Ethiopia. I've done a project in Jamaica, in the ghettos of Kingston in Jamaica uh, with refugees in Holland. Um, I've done some training in Switzerland and Spain. So I've, I've, off, I've, I've gone off and kind of been fed in lots of different ways, which has been really exciting. Um, and then as time's gone on, I've delivered quite a lot of behaviour management training, both for Dance United and separately. And, and I've become on occasion a bit of a consultant for advising artists and also organisations in how to work with more challenging groups. Um, I've had a little chapter published in a book. Um, and most recently I have um, completed a master's degree in psychodynamic approaches to working with adolescents, which is quite a mouthful. But um, it was basically because I was so interested in the behaviour of young people um, that I wanted to understand it on a, on a much deeper level. Um, now my job has become much less of an artist, more of a, um, it's my responsibility to um, decide on the strategic and artistic vision of Dance United Yorkshire and um, to fundraise and advocate for the company. So I'm much less of an artist now. Um, and do a bit more of the boring stuff, but I'm actually finding it quite rewarding. So um, that's kind of my journey in a nutshell. Sounds good. <laughs> Is it my turn? I think it might be, yeah. Okay. All right then. Hello everybody, sorry I'm late again. I was having technical issues, so I apologize. Um, so I'm Leanne Hudson and I'm the Dance Outreach Manager at Dance United Yorkshire. And I'll talk to you a little bit about my professional journey and how I ended up working for Dance United Yorkshire. So I trained at Laban in London on the degree course back in 2004 to 2007. And actually I started my career very much wanting to be a performer. I was very driven by performances and the intense training, but actually um, 
as soon as I got into lab and they offered a module, it was a teaching module, which explored more community based work. And I found that really fascinating. So I opted to take part in that. And it was there which I actually came across Dance United. And I had the opportunity to go to Holloway Prison and watch a piece of women's work, which was amazing. And I thought, oh, my gosh, one day I have to be involved in this somehow. And 10 years later, I am. Um, so I discovered Dance United very early on. Um, after graduating from Laban, I did go into performing. Um, I was quite interested in fusing different dance styles. So I was interested in African dance and Latin dance. And this um, gave me the opportunity to travel around the world to Croatia, Switzerland, France, Italy, and being able to perform um, was really exciting for me. Um, I got a little bit bored of that and felt oh, I need something else in my life. So I decided to go traveling and sort of left the dance behind. And I went to Peru for three months and I went um, up into the mountains into a little town called Huancayo. And it was here where I worked with street children, orphanages and also indigenous tribes from Peru. And I was like, am I really here? Is this happening? And I was able to um, do dance every day with them. So I taught them contemporary dance and they would teach me other Latin styles. And although the dancing was fun, I think what really fed my soul more was the types of people that I was working with. So the really remote communities, um, you know, the fact that they were so isolated from other parts of, of their town. Um, it was just a great experience and from then from that point i knew how can i do this back in the uk so when i arrived back i um continued this journey and i thought right okay well i know how to dance i've got my degree and i know how to teach dance but how can i gain more experience in working with um, young people with behavioral issues and having the confidence in managing groups of people who are going to tell you no um but you're going to say yes we are doing this so i um I worked for a long time in pupil referral units, so nothing to do with dance at all, but specifically just the behaviour management. I also worked in secure units like Helen. Um, this was quite difficult, you know, doors were locked, there were alarms, there was uh, exits here, there and everywhere of how to escape should anything happen. But actually, those experiences really gave me the confidence to feel like I can manage a group and do dance with them. Um, so that really, yeah, that helps gain the knowledge that I needed and equip me with certain skills to move forward with my journey. Um, following this, I secured a job in the Highlands in Scotland, which was miles away from anyone and anything. Um, and I lived there for nine months and my role was a outreach manager. So I was responsible for bringing together rural communities who were extremely isolated and remote. Um, I would wake up and drive for miles without seeing a single car or a single person. And I would have to get on a ferry and then go to really small islands. I'm not sure if you've heard of them, but they're called Egg, Muck, Rum and Canna. And their population was so small. So maybe only 50 people in, um, on this small island. And then I'd rock up and they're like, who is this woman? And I'm like, hey, I've come to do some dance. And it was all about inspiring them and bringing dance to their doorstep. Um, great opportunity to to experience and in the end that um, resulted in a large-scale performance so we actually brought the rural communities to mainland highlands and they performed in Inverness and in Fort William so that was a really good experience to just bring the small communities together and make them one big group which was great. Um, from here I did a lot of work in Birmingham at the Dance Exchange and I worked for a year with a group of really vulnerable young girls who suffered quite serious mental health issues. Again, I didn't have much experience in that field. It was more the behaviour management um, and we did have a lot of support from support workers and therapists, but it was great to work with them so intensely and see their journey from day zero to 12 months down the line and how dance can really impact and help change and reform people and great for their well-being. Um, and again, that resulted in a large scale performance and many opportunities for them throughout the year. And shortly after that, I joined Dance United in 2010. 
and I, I think I was in London for about a year and it was here where I had lots of intensive training myself as an artist. I was able to apply all the previous skills of behaviour management onto the projects that I was helping support. And my first project with Dance United was in Hackney in a college. Um, very difficult, but I was ready for the challenge and it was a great experience. And since 2010, I've pretty much been with Dance United all the way through. Um, I'm sure Helen will go on to talk a little bit more about how Dance United Yorkshire evolved, but once Dance United Yorkshire was, sorry, once Dance United was no longer, I moved back up to, to Yorkshire and began my journey with, with the Bradford based company. So that's me. Sorry, I'd muted myself. <laughs> so I'm going to carry on um, talking about Dance United and Dance United Yorkshire now um, and give you a sense of where where that came from and, and what that journey has been. Um, obviously, some of it is before my time. Um, so, uh, but first of all, just to give you an overview of the organisation. So we are um, a cultural leader specialising in social, social inclusion work. That is what our, the heart of our organisation is about. Um, and it's about making high quality dance and performance accessible to children and young people and adults who are the least culturally engaged and who are living on the margins of society. Um, what we aim to do is bring the best of the contemporary dance world together with social concern. Um, and we enable vulnerable, disengaged, excluded, marginalized, disadvantaged groups to, um, to experience the power of really, really high quality dance and performance. Um, we commission both emerging and established artists to come and make work with us and for us um, so that we can bring audiences into theatres who um, have never seen contemporary dance before, but also to attract knowledgeable dance audiences as well. So everything we make, we want it to stand in its own right as a really excellent piece of work. Um, we work in cross-sector collaborations, so we help to support um, the needs of our statutory partners so that might be education or health criminal justice youth, the youth service so we're very much trying to help all these different services achieve their aims as well with their groups um, and ultimately we're trying to use the power of 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 contemporary dance and theatre to have a long lasting and meaningful impact on people's lives um, so we work with um, and have worked with over the years um, children and young people who are disengaged or excluded from mainstream education, uh, young people who are in a pupil referral unit, so Leanne um, had mentioned working in pupil referral units. If you're not sure what one of those is, a PRU, it's when kids have literally reached the end of their journey in a mainstream setting and they are deemed not, not able to cope within that environment anymore, so there are kind of special schools for them and their behaviour called pupil referral units. Um, we've worked with young people who are um, young offenders and young people involved in criminal justice system. Uh, a lot of our young people have a trajectory of very low educational attainment or we meet young people who have no, no GCSEs. We work with young people who are not in education, employment or training, who are looked after, who are homeless. Uh, young people who have English as a second language, who live in economically deprived areas. We, live, we work with children who suffer with um, substance misuse um, or live with parents who suffer with substance misuse. We work with young people who experience domestic violence and abuse, who have learning disabilities and emotional behavioural difficulties, who might have um, mental health issues. Quite a lot of our young people much more recently have been, you know, um, suffering with anxiety, depression. They're involved with CAMS, which is the Child and Adolescent Mental Health Service, um, or their parents are um, suffering with poor mental health. Uh, unfortunately, we meet a lot of young people who are involved in child sex exploitation. Um, we work with young people who are young carers, who are young parents and who are refugees or unaccompanied asylum seekers. We also work with adults, particularly women, who are victims of domestic abuse, who are, um, who are socially, isolate, uh, socially isolated or who suffer with poor mental health. Uh, we work with women in prison, we work with women refugees, women who live in areas of deprivation and those who have substance misuse issues. So that's that's who we work with um the history of dance united um actually began in ethiopia 
when a group of artists went to work in Addis Ababa, which is the capital of Ethiopia, with a group of street children. They took 120 children off the streets who um, had never danced before and they created a large scale performance project. This then led to a group of those dancers being trained professionally for five years and they formed a dance company. Two of those people are still in existence and they we kind of call them our sister organization we have done a few collaborations with them over the years and i have been to ethiopia and worked with them um to see where it all began um, and if you are familiar with our logo um above dance united yorkshire there is a jumping man a dancing man and that is janiad who was one of the very first street children to take part in the big project and they are now doing what we do where they are giving back to their community so they do a lot of community projects themselves um after that project, the, those, some of those artists who'd worked in Ethiopia took this model of three weeks, taking non-dancers to a professional stage in three weeks and um, producing something of high artistic quality. That model was reproduced in a number of prisons across the UK, mainly with adult women. That carried on for a number of years and then they developed um, a program which was a 12 week intensive program for young offenders in the community. The idea being that you reach the young people before they become involved in the criminal justice system before they're incarcerated. Um, that's when my journey began with them uh, with the company in 2007. Um, and that project was initially focused on young offenders, but very, very quickly it organically grew to reach young people who were struggling in school, etc. So that's what, that's how our net has become wide because it's difficult when you put labels on on groups of people and individuals. We just we gradually opened up to young people who were struggling, who were marginalised, who were vulnerable. Um, that 12 week project was um, researched and evaluated by the University of Manchester and some very, very robust um, research was produced um, to reveal that there was a high percentage of young people that were not reoffending or that were going back into education. And that um, research was used to roll out the academy model in London and down in Hampshire. So this 12 week model was reproduced. Um, and uh, that was great <laughs> until the economic crisis happened and gradually it became less feasible to spend the amount of money on a group of young people. Um, whereas initially there was a lot of money to do the research, does this work? But then it came to a point where it was like, that's a lot of money for only that amount of kids. So even though it might have been having a lifelong effect, it didn't work within the climate, the economic climate. And this is where we in Bradford started to look at how we could adapt this model. Um, how were we going to get through this, this economic climate? So we, we became a community interest company, Dance United Yorkshire, and we were wholly owned by the national charity, but we started to respond to the climate and to the region. So we shortened the project to five or six weeks. We started to become peripatetic. We were doing work across the region. Um, and we were starting to introduce more community provisions, which we'll go on and talk about in a little while. And then what happened really is... Um, Dance United, the charity, became financially unable to continue um, and they became quite stuck in the 12 week model due to lots of sort of funding restrictions and they went into liquidation and almost at the same time they set us free <laughs> as our own organisation and we became a national portfolio organisation with the Arts Council and that happened in 2015 and now we more recently have become our own charitable organization so in 2019 we became a charity so that's kind of the the journey um and how we've got to where we are today um in terms of the ethos we have what we call a methodology like a way of working with our groups um and there are lots of different tiny strands and intricate details that might come out, hopefully, if you guys have, have questions. Um, but one of the main things is that we, we push our participants out of their comfort zones. We don't meet people where they're at and hang out there. <laughs> we meet people and take them away from where they are and push them to a place they've never been before, which ultimately means we are 
taking quite a big risk and that's why we have to do a lot of pastoral work there's quite a lot of pastoral wrap around a lot of engagement with our with the families of the young people we cannot expect your people to just come along skip around in the studio and jump onto a stage it's not going to happen like that so um because of the risk we're taking we're asking all these people to take huge risks and all these people are very vulnerable and quite fragile um we have to work in a particular way so we work with non-dancers there is no audition process to anything we do we we work with who who comes to us or who are referred to us um we push everybody to achieve the highest possible standards um and we treat everybody as a dancer from the first day we meet them we call them dancers and we call them a company from that first day um, we set we do work towards goals most of our work in fact I'd say 99.9% .9 of our work results in some kind of performance because we believe that's where things can really change as well so we talk about this goal quite early on we set that expectation um, we don't take easy options we, we do it is a very very hard journey to get our young people or our women or our children from A to A to Z um, we choreograph work that is led artistically so we, we try not to make issue based work so if we work with a young group of young offenders we don't say why have you offended and how do you feel about that and then we make well, we don't do that we try to take them away from those experiences because some of them don't want to talk about it some of them don't want to think about it um, and so it's our job we're not social workers and we're not um, counsellors and we're not psychotherapists and we're not um, we're not any of those things we're dance artists so we work with the dance and so often our pieces might have a theme or, or a story but we will try to avoid using their issues to make the work um, and this is very interesting when we work with professional choreographers who sometimes want to rip people's souls out and put them onto stage uh, we have to be quite gentle with how we how we develop the work um, we do teach material and we create material so the choreographic process tries to do both of those things um, we use a lot of focus and stillness in our work um, and a lot of discipline so a lot of structure a lot of um, boundaries very clear boundaries and with our young people on our projects when we do intensive work we have a serious amount of rules they cannot use their phones they have to be in their bare feet they cannot have jewelry on they have to wear a certain attire they're not allowed to eat any of their own food um but in order to achieve the high standard on a stage you, you we have to adopt these particular ways of working in order to, to to get the results and ultimately when we treat them seriously and we treat them professionally that is when behavior changes and that is when ultimately they can start to think differently about who they are about the world about other people about society about their future um so that's a little bit of an insight into our into our methodology um and hopefully you've all got a few questions that you can ask after leanne's talked about some of our actual actual projects and initiatives so i'll hand over to leanne to do that great thank you um, so just following on from Helen's discussion with regards to the intensive project, so they are four weeks where we work with them intensely every single day from 10 until 3 o'clock. Um, we work with young people who are maybe struggling in mainstream education um, from pupil referral units, care homes, maybe not in any form of education and as part of that we also work with local colleges who um, we generally get four role models per project and we, we use those as anchors within the company so that um, the young people that are referred to us have something positive to to look up to and to work with and they are really integral with within the project and it can mean the success or the failings of of a project as well and um, we team them up with the participants just so that they have somebody positive to work alongside so they are yeah very integral to the work that we do and um, as helen said we literally take everything from them their mobile phones we tie their hair up no jewelry bare feet t-shirts as soon as a walk through the door they are treated as professional dancers and it takes a little while for them to get their heads around that but eventually they understand um we we ensure like helen said we, they don't bring in any of their own food and generally because the food that they're bringing is pretty poor and um, snacks crisps pop which is all great once in a while but on a project where we're trying to um 
promote healthy eating we strip all that away we provide them with breakfast and lunch which is really nice a lot of our young people maybe are not used to having healthy meals so we really promote that um, and it's a nice bonding experience as well for everybody to eat together um, again Helen has mentioned that we really do push them and we absolutely strive for excellence and we don't settle for average um, they find that difficult at at the start and then eventually they're just coming with you on this crazy journey and they're just doing great things and actually it um, empowers them and they find um, strength within themselves and want to do better which is so rewarding um, as part of the um, project we run a qualification alongside the dance which is called the arts awards and for a lot of our young people maybe this is the only form of um, academic qualification they may receive throughout their educational time um, it's a bronze or a silver that they can complete and generally it's a bronze to start with and within that they also have to go into a local primary school which we have really good relationships with across Bradford and they will teach their skills to younger people which is so great and maybe for those who had really low confidence at the start all of a sudden you see them shine in um, in a primary school and having like little kids look up to them is really lovely to see and for them to find this new role within themselves that they never thought they could achieve is is also really rewarding um, alongside that they have to review a professional piece of theatre so we will take them to a theatre and they will watch with seeing performances from Northern Ballet and um, Romeo and Juliet like they, they've seen lots of professional work and and it's really nice again because a lot of our clients that we work with our client group they haven't ever been into a theatre so we really talk about theatre etiquette and the importance of being a good audience member um, and it's a really lovely experience for them and they do this before their final performance which is also in a professional theatre they will have their workers and family and friends come to support them so they have that opportunity as well um, as part of the project one thing that we do is before the project there's so much to set up so um, Helen, I don't know if you mentioned about the recruitment process, but as part of that, we, we do home visits with our young people so that they have an opportunity to ask questions. We can just lay out what our expectations are and they can feel comfortable knowing certain members of staff. So we make sure that we meet them and the young people prior to them. So we meet them and their families prior to them starting the project. Um, we also work with external choreographers. So as Helen said, we, we strive for excellence within our choreography. So we've worked with um, professional companies such as Two Faced Dance, New Adventures, Protein, Yasmin Vardaman. And it would be the artists that team up with a choreographer from an external company. And we will just work together for a week on a collaborative process and just throw ideas around. And by the end of the week, we've come up with a loose piece of choreography definitely themes and ideas that we can then trial on actual dancers so the next phase would be we would work with northern school of contemporary dance perhaps or york st john's or bradford college and we will trial the choreography on actual dancers and on their bodies just so we can visually see does this piece work are there any things we need to change and um, this is really crucial as well so we can visually see it in, in its entirety before we put it on to our young people. And that's a great way of building our relationships with these colleges and universities as well, because a lot of them then come onto our projects and act as, as um, role models or placement students, and they have an experience of working with our types of client groups. Um, I mentioned about the qualifications. So following, following the project, we don't just like for it to end there and that be that be it and we never see the young people again and um, so we have our evening provisions where this is an opportunity for them to continue their journey and we offer a range of provisions for our young people and actually this is at the time where we really see them develop and um they really find even more confidence within themselves. So we have a variety of provisions. We have our Bradford Youth Company and they are based at Callas Sangham in Bradford and their age is 11 to 16. And we also have our performance company, which are ages 16 to 18. And we have our Calderdale Youth Company, which are 11 to 16. 
and those three companies they will have the opportunity to have weekly sessions where we again we do intense training just for two hours a week doing contemporary dance and um, they will have the opportunity to work with external choreographers so if the funds allow we can bring in um, artists to work with them so they have a different voice and not just mine every week um, so that's quite nice for them to have that um, it's an opportunity for them to to really build bonds and friendships within the group and have something positive because once they've finished with us in the intensive projects they're generally going back to their home life which might not be that great so having us um, as a regular positive contact in their lives is is amazing for them and um, we're able to continue that pastoral work like Helen said so we can support them in school it might be support them into work it might be helping them with family dynamics and um, again maybe they just need more time to establish who they are as people and build their confidence so for me this is well for all of us this is a great way to continue that journey with them um, and just before I move on, let me just mention, which I forgot to mention about the projects, we um, deliver and have delivered them in Bradford, Leeds, Batley, Keithley, and our latest one being in Wrexham. I forgot to add that in. Um, we also have our gradient company, which are 18 plus, and Helen created this. So they once were our performance company, and then they almost outgrew the performance company age and we were having younger people coming through from projects and the performance company were getting older and the ability was quite um stretched between both groups so helen created gradient and they are 18 and i think we might even have somebody who's like 13 there which is great and um, but they, they just don't want to leave us so we've developed that as being um, an opportunity for them to also create work so a lot of them are keen choreographers and they have their own ideas which is fantastic and we we allow them to almost self-lead that in a way so they have the opportunity to teach their peers and um, develop their own work they um, perform as part of curtain raises as well so we're really pushing them to become their own sort of choreographers and, and artists within that company um, we also do a lot of schools work as i mentioned we have quite good relationships with with a lot of schools especially in bradford and as part of this we deliver arts awards as well and because it's for the lower year we deliver the um discover and explore which are a little bit easier and simpler to follow um, and we'll use those schools for our project participants to go and teach at so they will have the opportunity to work with the primary schools as Helen mentioned, we have our women's company who are also based at Kalasangam. And these are women who suffer domestic abuse, emotional abuse, and it's a real outlet for them to come and just have two hours a week where they can just be in the zone, they can leave the troubles at the door. Um, it's great that we offer them a free creche as well. So a lot of the women do have young children who are not in school. So they can come and they can drop their children and they can just have two hours of dance, which is great. And as Helen mentioned, like to see their journey from start to finish is pretty incredible. Um, so it's great that that work is being offered for them as well. Um, Helen also mentioned our prison work. So we've worked in Newall and Askham. Um, I've worked in Askham only, Helen's done both, and this is pretty amazing to be able to go into um, a different environment and have the experience of creating a theatre space within a prison is, is pretty awesome. And then having the guards come and, and having their friends come and watch them in such a space is is pretty awesome and back in the day when we used to run projects in Bradford and Leeds we would have um, people from prisons both Weatherby prison and Askham Grange so both male and female they would come and, and join in our projects for four weeks so they would have day release um, join with us and then they would they would go back and they would also teach and perform and have this really amazing experience um, we also deliver artist training. So we tend to do between like two day to a week long training. And here you get a real 
like deeper insight into our work and our methodology and we also offer workshops and intensive training to support this and um, we deliver training at northern school of contemporary dance and york st john so maybe with students who also have like a real keen interest we can we can go into different venues and, and offer that specifically for that that particular group um, finally we have been given four years worth of funding for a a uh, place in Bradford called Homewood. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but it's one of the most deprived areas in Bradford. Um, it's a community initiative and it really supports the most vulnerable groups of people there. So we work with young right up and through to women's companies. Um, there's some amazing work happening there already, which is fantastic and this will continue. Um, as part of that funding, we have been able to employ two new artists, which um, Helen is doing an amazing job in training them up and getting them all equipped and ready. And they're delivering amazing work and, and really supporting Homewood and, and its people. And just to talk to you briefly a little bit about what we're doing in lockdown or what we've been doing and how we're still working remotely with our participants. So we we obviously wanted to keep connected and one of the things that Helen mentioned again is that our pastoral work is so important so just to kind of have no contact with our young people and adults would just be really random and they do heavily rely on us and, and that weekly support that weekly contact so it's really important for us that we maintain that even during this time. So we have done two videos so far. We did one with our youth companies and they just performed um, random places, gardens, houses. And our trainee artist, Steph, she created a, a film for that. If you haven't seen it already, maybe we can share it with you at the end. Um, and then also Helen worked with our gradient company and it was a bit more professional. And there were a few more tasks added and there was more depth to what that was, um, which is also a great piece of work, which if you haven't seen already, I welcome you to see. Um, and Helen is also working on a piece with the women's company, so a creative film, which I believe is almost ready. So maybe Helen can talk a little bit more about that. So that will be soon ready to view. And um, again, Helen and the trainee artists met with the women in different parts of, of Bradford and interviewed and they learned some choreography. And um, so I, I think that was great fun for them to have contact with, with us still. Um, we are still running our arts awards, so we can deliver this remotely and we've created a package where we got one of our trainee artists to deliver individually to each of the houses. So the package contained all the arts of crafts, we threw in some um, extra goodies and well-being kits and, and eye masks and just something to lift the spirits of our participants. So we did that for the youth company as well as the women's group as well. They also got a nice little care package. So we've delivered the Discover Arts Award and the Bronze Arts Award. And I'm currently doing home visits with each of our young people. Obviously, I won't go into massive detail about what that is, but there are lots of pastoral um, needs for our young people at the minute, um, which is uh, this lockdown hasn't helped their already kind of feelings of anxieties and, and pressures and stresses like it's really come to the forefront which is quite difficult for a lot of our young people so we are offering a lot of support and and get, needing to have extra intervention for them as well um but hopefully in in summer we can deliver um actual um, dance with them and do a dance project which would be in the cathedral grounds at Kalasangam so we can work with them in person and we can do what we do best and we can just be physical obviously in a safe way but that's what they're craving they want that um that that dance they want that interaction with other people that's what helps them stay stable and helps them keep motivated on a weekly basis and finally I'm sure I said finally like 20 minutes ago, but this is definitely finally. Um, we have been given some funding, a holiday grant by the government 
to work with 32 children across Bradford, which is pretty awesome. And as part of that, they will also deliver, so they will also get an arts award qualification. So they will be supported by four dance artists. They will receive weekly visits and their families will also receive family packages. So food parcels and healthy eating and we'll just engage them within the summer holidays because that is probably one of the most difficult times where there is no access to anything to anybody to funds to money to food so the fact that we can provide that is is pretty cool as well that's me i think i'm done <laughs> so i guess we are um we have a bit of time now for people to ask any questions about anything we've talked about at all um and um, possibly open a bit of discussion. Um, but yeah, I think it's about, about any of you guys and any, anything that you're interested to know more about. There you go. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> I have a question. I have a couple of um, questions that I can kickstart you off and then, unless somebody else, oh, well, Mary's starting. Mary, start, yeah. Mary. Yeah, okay. okay. Just uh, thank you so much. That's been really interesting. Um, I was just wondering, um, for both of you, what is the most rewarding thing about your job and also the most challenging? That one. Do you want to start, Leanne? Yeah, I can start. Um, so the most rewarding would be from where the young people and adults, where they begin to where they end and just seeing their journey and their confidence grow. I think when a lot of our young people and adults start working with us, it's almost like for some of them, there can be a bit of a shell of themselves. And, and by the end, you see their personalities, their character, their confidence, their friendship builds. And for me, that yeah, just their confidence grow from start to beginning, from start to beginning, from start to end. I think <laughs> it's really rewarding to see the most challenging um there are many challenges and each project is different i think personally helen may be different my most challenging is a behavior which is where for example i feel like i deal better with aggressive um behaviors where you can actually battle with something you've got something there to work with that there's words there's there's action and um, the most challenging for me is where people are maybe more reluctant to join in and they, we call it the brick wall um, and we had an experience where a girl sat in, in the dance studio for about an hour and a half completely reluctant to move so we were like right okay we'll just dance around you then she wasn't willing to move we tried all sorts of tactics all our strategies we got different members of staff to to engage with her but she was just so set that she's not moving today so that is probably one of the biggest challenges i face <laughs> um i think i would probably mostly agree with leanne about the reward in terms of meeting somebody at the beginning of a process and seeing where they then get to and I think because I've been involved for years and I've now you get to a point where you've worked with someone for quite a number of years and you can remember their first session or their their first performance where perhaps they were their heads heads were down a little bit and their movement was a bit shaky and now you see them like just owning an entire stage on their own it's and to know you've been part of that and things that you've put in place and decisions that you've made and choreography you've made that's been part of their journey and um it, that is it's very rewarding um but i think the challenge one of the main challenges i think there's two for me i think one is um the, the people we work with have put up so many defenses to protect themselves so that comes up obviously in different kinds of behavior but sometimes you can be on this great journey and then the next minute that kid just disappears and you're like great <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and and I think the kind of moments of real disappointment or um you know you're, you're on a journey and you've got eight kids that are all ready and then one kid decides they're not you know that those kinds of moments the unexpected moments of that's out of your control and you have to pull yourself together and fight for the rest of the people that are in the room and it, some of those things can be quite upsetting um 
and I think that just managing groups is very difficult. And I mentioned earlier about doing my master's in psychodynamic behavior. A lot of the people I met were like CAMS workers and social workers and psychotherapists. They work one-to-one with a challenging behavior. <laughs> we work with a room of challenging behavior and all the dynamics that happens between all those people is some, and you have to manage that space and you have to take control of that space. And there's so much going on in that room. It's not even, it's ridiculous. So that's hugely challenging. Yeah. Vince, I can see you with your hand up. <laughs> uh, I guess just on from that one um, is like, you know, you had this amazing university doing the research and backing up all the things that we know as dance artists that work and that, you know, really change, can change lives. So, and to have a link to that would be amazing. But what, how do you, without a university, how, what are the strategies that you use to evaluate that you are doing good so that you can prove it back to the funders? You know, in that real practical sense of how do you prove it long-term? Yeah. Helen, you're probably better to answer this one, aren't you? Well, yeah, I mean, I've been doing quite, I've been involved in quite a lot of the fundraising over the last sort of two or three years and have been involved, I was involved in the uh, application for Homewood, so the four-year programme and a lot, it's, a lot of it is, um, it's, it's a combination of qualitative and quantitative <laughs> sort of results. So you've got a lot of kind of stories and narrative and quotes. And we gather a lot of that stuff from all of our participants, from artists that work with us, choreographers, audience members. So we have this bank of like really rich material that, you know, you get quotes from really important people. Um, that can be quite powerful within a funding application and then I think we just do a range of different kinds of um, research and evaluation so obviously the University of Manchester was great um, that had actual sort of figures we had another report done over three years which was really looking at statistics of how the young people developed in really particular areas of like confidence and embodied confidence and social interaction and education so we have along our journey engaged with external evaluators to help us create really robust figures um but it's expensive stuff um which is problematic and also we're for the homewood project we we're going to be working with leeds university and they haven't started yet. I mean, part of that is to do with lockdown, but they haven't started yet because of the ethics involved. They have to go through this massive process to even ask a kid a question. <laughs> um, and so that's problematic as well. And even though I think £10,000 is quite a lot for a year's research to a university, that's not enough. <laughs> so I think it's, it's hard work, but I think you, we just have to keep gathering different kinds of material. Um, to yeah and to, to and numbers we're not big on numbers we are more quality over quantity but we do we have over time you know things like a hundred percent of the young people who complete a project will receive a bronze arts award that's a pretty good statistic um and that's the way we work we ensure that every single young person who's on that stage has done enough to get them a qualification so we can throw that statistic out you know so we've worked a lot we do internal and external so yeah a lot of work <laughs> and just as a you know somebody who was born in Homewood and family still live in Dudley Hill Tong School alumni um, I, I'd like to see what you're doing really back in that area of town yeah um, we well we uh, we're going to be there for another three and a half years <laughs> Um, so, you know, I'm happy for you to get in touch separately and um, you can come and get involved. Um, I don't know anything about you at the minute, but we've we've got basically uh, from nothing. We've got a four to sevens group, an eight to elevens group, a 12 to 19 group, a women's company. We're doing a partnership project with Yorkshire Johnson with elders. So we're working pretty much the youngest is four and the eldest is about 94. And that's all happened since October. Uh, so between October and February, we engaged 566 people. We've done work in the secondary schools. Um, we've done work with a vulnerable group of, of young women, um, with a group of, um, what do they call it? It's serious and organized crime group. These kids are like 12. <laughs> Blows my mind that they are categorized as serious and organized crime. Um, yeah, 
so we we and we're just gonna hopefully be doing more and more obviously our momentum has stopped because of this wretched virus and um, we were due to be doing a performance probably i think it's next weekend we were due to be doing one of our projects in homewood with tong school bradford foster academy bradford academy big show with gary gary clark's been involved in some of our um for some of you who know gary clark um he's been involved in some of our work as well recently helping us with intergenerational projects so We've got lots of plans and hopefully soon we can get back to it. But yeah, happy for you to come and be involved, chat more. So yeah. Any more? Um, hi, sorry, um, my video isn't working at the moment. Um, I'm Laura from Bradford Fringe Festival. Um, and I just wanted to ask you like how you found it engaging in the communities like was it hard to get the young the younger people like engaged because when I worked um, with the Women of the World Festival we had like a real issue with getting the young women from Tong and Homewood engaged in in anything that wasn't the phones or the friends you know and it was really really difficult to break those barriers down and build trust with them in a short space of time for them to participate and that's something that as as the fringe festival progresses we want to be able to go into these communities go into the communities in Bradford and build relationships with these young people and give them a platform in order to create something you know that a, a, an annual festival that's you know that and and would, i'm just like wondering how yeah how how you built that engagement with them to start and how you um how you got them there because that's like the hardest thing i found is getting you know especially in working class areas like because i'm from a i'm not from bradford but i'm from a working class area in uh, in manchester you know from a council estate and i know that the kids there now are not engaged so how do we do that like with, with those who need it most big question sorry helen <laughs> <laughs> um well i mean it, it one of the things that we do i mean we often start with an intensive project um, that is the beginning of a journey for a lot of our young people. Um, and so those referrals come directly through another agency. So we will build a relationship with, for example, a pupil referral unit or a school, and we will get them to identify their most vulnerable young people and people who might benefit from something like this. We're not just saying have some respite teachers give us your like most bonkers young people we're saying please send us young people who will really benefit from this kind of program yeah. and then we do the family engagement and sometimes that's one visit two visits three visits we sit in that person's house for an hour two hours we show them dvds we tell them all the positive things we're honest with them we tell them you're not going to be doing street dance you're not going to have your phone you can't eat chocolate bars all day long like mm. this is the reality but we say to them you're going to get a qualification you're going to perform and say you're going to build this you're going to do this and, yeah. and kind of we get to a point with them where we say like have you got anything to lose by coming along like have you got something better to do and we've learned over the years i suppose how to engage the whole family we speak to mum or we speak to carer and we say like mum's going to get you up every day and you're going to do this so you kind of build yeah. we spend a lot of time it's community development work really um that we do and then those young people are brought into that that studio for the first time and then we have all our tactics and strategies for how we manage that first ever experience of contemporary dance and then from there it's just gradually just sort of picking away at, at kind of, of you know getting them more and more hooked in more and more engaged yeah. um and then they will join our youth companies and etc so that's kind of traditionally how we engage we work with partners and they refer young people we do all the pastoral stuff homewood's been different we have literally taken the mountain to mohammed um and the little are easier the little you'll just get parents rocking up with kids and throwing them at us kind of thing um but it's it's taken a bit of time and it's it's again about it's about partnerships and I, I don't want to offend anybody here but sometimes you meet professionals who also have low expectations of their young people yeah so you have people that say they won't do that oh no she doesn't like doing that she won't get involved in no no she's not going to do that and you're like 
oh my god that's literally the thing that blanks my blood boil because i'm like you cannot and we had an experience recently where we had this girl won't take part she won't take part she's not going to do it she's not going to do it so she didn't do the first project and then she came along by herself to our youth company just appeared and i said oh she won't do it so Mm -hmm. sometimes other professionals can be unhelpful sometimes um (laughs) but i think it's just it's giving yourself if you want to do a and you've got a really challenging group or really challenging community you've got to start way back and go and attend things get them to know you know get to know them get to know the space and have something quite set and strong i find that with that with us we work towards a performance so we say this is what you're going to be doing and they have that goal to work towards Whereas I think if you offer something a bit more, we're just going to be doing a little bit of it. Sometimes they're like, well, what is that? So we use performance. We use the goal of performance. And even though that's a bit scary, we always say, oh, don't think about that. <laughs> but really we're saying, no, actually do think about that. Because but it's building that structure, isn't it? And building yeah. it with the families first yeah. and getting a them lot, on board. A lot, a lot of work. But sometimes yeah. it's little steps. So, so one of the first pieces of youth work we did in Homewood ended up involving just two girls. But we yeah. stuck to it and stuck to it and stuck to it and stuck to it. They performed. They were amazing. And that's now spilled out a bit. And now we have 20 young people in our youth company. I don't that, even really know how that's happened. but That's amazing. <laughs> it, it is and Homewood is hard, as Vince probably knows for himself. But <laughs> it's like... <laughs> um, but it is just time and effort and making yourself known in that community. I mean, I'm a Londoner and I'm not from that community, but I spend time there and I get to know those people. So recently we've been doing some filming with one of the women in Homewood and a few of us, knew, we, we, you'll just see a kid and go, hiya. You've got to become part of that community. You can't just dip in and go, we're working in Homewood. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. You have to invest time and, and love you have to give a lot and and then when you give a lot they'll they'll start to give give, give back to you thank you that was brilliant <laughs> um i've got a question from saima saima would you like to ask or should i just read it from the chat hi yeah i don't mind um asking thank you um yeah i just wanted to say thank you so much for this session it's really um enlight- enlightening and interesting uh, the work that you're doing it sounds amazing um so my question is if you don't mind me sharing a little bit from my background i'm an english teacher and um recently i did a project with um uh, like a grassroots charity and they were in coordination with british fencing so they come they came into our school and they, uh, it was a, a group called Muslim Girls Fence. So it wasn't specifically just Muslim girls that were in the group. Um, it was quite a diverse group of students taking part, but they would have an hour of fencing and an hour of poetry and discussion and reflection. And um, the kind of approach that they had was they wanted to, like you said, bring the um, project to the girls where they were at and so they also delivered the project in uh, mosques for example or places where the girls would feel the most comfortable um, and not necessarily taking them out of their comfort zone to begin with um, so that they can engage with the project completely and fully and I know with dance um, and things like that you mentioned you'd ask the p- participants to tie their hair back and things like that and I was just curious how that would look with I know Bradford has a lot of um, Muslims in the community and um, how that would look for kind of young Muslim girls who want to take part and um, are there any kind of opportunities available to to young Muslim girls or racially marginalized people that could take part in your projects? I've got a couple of things to say but Leanne do you want to because we've worked we have worked with quite a lot of Muslim mm. girls and boys um, do you want to say a little bit and then I've got a little bit to add at the end? Sure. So we've never found it to be a barrier, actually, um, when we, you know, referrals are made. Once everybody's in that dance studio, everybody's just a dancer and and they're treated professionally. And for me personally, anyway, it's never been a barrier. Um, everybody we've got through, they've performed, they've had family members come to watch. Um, the only particular person I can think of is a young male which I'm currently working with now and that is it is difficult he's in our evening provisions and his um, family do struggle with what he does but in terms of our intensive project projects I've never had 
any issues with with people from any walks of life like everybody's just been happy to be involved family being supportive so I think I've had a little bit more um, of a barrier with adult Muslim women um, with the women's company we have had Muslim women taking part and performing I don't know if they've told anybody that they're doing it um, but we did work with Women's Zone which is a Muslim um, organization women's organization in Bradford and we wanted them to be part of our intergenerational project that we worked on and they took part in a number of sessions and then they all just said that they weren't allowed to perform so we we have I think when we when we have referrals I think the families are on board because the referral process involves the family engagement so we end up getting Muslim girls who are allowed to and culturally you know according to their family that's okay um but I but with the adult women it's been it's been much more obvious that that kind of barrier but something that I'm something a project that I have in mind at the moment and we have actually just recently applied for a little bit of funding and it's one of those things that once I get something in my head I'll find a way to fund it even if we have to go like round like this but I, I'd really like to do a project that is a female only project for a female only audience um, because uh, the, the, it is there it is it is there in Bradford that we can't access everybody and it's been particularly you know when, when I have worked with Muslim women and say I'm not allowed to perform it's 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 difficult because you want them to be able to have that experience um so it's something that I I think as an organization we're looking more and more into in terms of trying to meet everybody's needs in the community and if that means a female only audience then that is what we shall do mm -hmm. so yeah that's amazing thank you I, I'd love to get in touch with you and um to share some of the work that I've been oh, doing. Oh, definitely, yeah. yeah, do so, do so, Thank for you. sure. Um, I've got a quick thing, hello, um, I'm Karen. I work for uh, Mind the Gap, just down the road or up the hill in Bradford, yeah. guys, um, and I also run um, Mesh Dance, which is an inclusive company based in Leeds, so all my work is with people with learning disabilities, so um, yeah, thank you for sharing your stories and your um uh yeah everything this evening it's been really interesting and it's it's clear that there's probably quite a lot of ways that our work overlaps definitely in terms of our goals and our remits and things um and we're, we're doing like a lot of work online at the minute with both mesh dance and mind the gap about um you know trying to keep people engaged with what we're doing and yeah a lot of the time it's a the priority is the pastoral need and that that emotional support and I, yeah I guess, I guess it's not so much a question but it's just something that's popped into my head over the past few weeks as we start to contemplate maybe things returning or some form of activity that actually there's going to be a whole heap of new emotional needs to come back to normal you know and that that you know new barriers popping up because people have got into such habits of being isolated like breaking down those those barriers as well so it's not just about kind of getting to that end point of going yes we can come back and everything's yeah. fine it's that oh, yeah pe I think people are still going to find that challenge in that return um so yeah I guess it's just something that's popped into my head recently with all these discussions that people are having mm -hmm. uh, just that yeah we do, there's still so much unknown that's coming. Definitely. And I think also because we don't know what that will look like when we can actually deliver, <laughs> it's not going to be the normal studio setting as such. Yeah. Um, like I mentioned earlier, for us, our thoughts are how can we use a cathedral ground at Kala Sangam? So it's an outdoor space. We maybe have less numbers, but then we're thinking, well, public are going to be passing through. How does this impact? them and they're used to working in a, a space where doors are closed and it's just them and and so there's so many other things and factors to to think about um so yeah it, it's a lot to consider isn't it it's like a new normal and the they, although they seem to dance but what does that look like and how will they really feel when it's happening i don't know it's that fact that it's it's more than just the practical side of it as well isn't it yeah. it's that emotion and emotional need that absolutely it will be yeah uh, I think like a shock to the system maybe because people have become so used to being on their own or very much isolated in some way to then having to 
reintegrate and, and it'll be you know the same for for all of us whether you've got a disability or some kind of additional need or whatever I think it's challenging um but yeah I think it definitely impacts on people's practice definitely I think a lot, of, a lot of our young people, they have been keen to dance, but all they've been wanting to do when, when I go around is just talk, talk yeah. at me, or, which is fine, you can do that. And, um, and that's been really nice, just because obviously I'm used to seeing them in a capacity within the studio, and although we do offer obviously extra pastoral care, just being able to have a conversation has been really powerful for them, and just a little walk and a chat. Yeah. that's that's what they've needed they haven't necessarily needed the physical at that moment although they're looking forward to it whatever that may look like but yeah just that connection to yeah. somebody other than their family or themselves yes yeah. Uh, yeah thank you it's okay <laughs> one myself do we have any other questions any other thoughts I had a question regarding like your, 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 the care work that you were talking about in terms of joining in um, before, a, a, before a project happens. So what's like the, the communication that would, you would have with either your funders or the schools or the other organisations before you start a project, especially in terms of knowing the students that you're going to work with? So do you mean how, how do young people get, get referred? Like what's, yeah. the, what's the first step? Well, I mean, I was doing it recently in Homewood, like starting with a couple of schools we hadn't worked with before. Um, and the first thing you do is go to people at the top <laughs> because mm -hmm. there's lots of people that will say, that sounds amazing and we'll get back to you. And they don't. Um, so you need to get to head, you need to get to heads of things. That's what we've learned over the years. Um, and then you have to present this amazing opportunity for their young people. Um, and I think along our journey, people, people will get it and people will go, that's amazing. We'd love to give you some young people. And then you'll meet people that just don't get it and go, no, nah, they, they won't do that. That's the usual. So our kids won't do that. Um, so again, it's, it starts with building quite a good partnership with a, with a referral agency, um, meeting a long time before a project. So if I'm doing a project in, you know, if I was to do a project in November, in September, I will be having these meetings and setting everything up, um, possibly even earlier. Uh, yeah. And then you, you ask them to, to recommend those names. They will refer the kids that they feel. And then you work with those names. You contact you then get in touch with the family and you almost kind of remove the agency and you then start in, engaging with the family directly. Um, you maintain a partnership with that agency. So if it's a school or a pupil or a phone, you, you will keep in touch with them, but you kind of want them out of the way, really. They're just kind of, they're going to give you the kids and then you're going to work with the kids and they then just remain kind of on the sidelines. Um, but it's it's real serious meaningful partnership you have to build trust with everybody you work with from the organizations right through to the to the actual young people and their families and you have to if you make a promise you have to see that through if you promise something you have to come up with the goods and then from there you probably then have a partner for life. So we now have schools that we go to in Bradford. So Bradford Academy is a massive partner, Hanson Academy, um, all sorts of schools that will just give us kids now. We don't even have to have a chat. We'll be like, got a project, here's some kids. Because they've got familiar with our work and then they can help advocate to other schools. And that's happened over in Calderdale. We've done a few projects in Brighouse in Calderdale um, where, where a head teacher will say to another head teacher, this company is worth working with. So it's a huge amount of work that we have to do to, to get before we, we have those kids in a studio. So there's months and months that happens before those kids do dance. Thank you. Um, are there any other thoughts or questions? Do you guys wanna wrap up maybe? Yeah, happy to. I mean, um, you can all sort of, I mean, our website is, um, it's a little bit outdated at the minute. It's just slipped down the list of things to do. Um, but have a look at our website. And I think Vince, you were talking about the, the academic research, the Manchester research. There's, if you have a little look around, um, it, there's some stuff on there 
um and um our facebook page is obviously quite that's got our most recent films on that we've made the two little films that leanne talked about to have a little look what we've been doing in lockdown um and if you want to contact me directly i am just helen at duy.org.uk so if you're interested in anything or want to get involved or um just want to ask anything else or anything at all just feel free to to contact contact me that's absolutely fine Liam, do you want to say some last, yeah. last words? Thank you for having us. It's been great to see everybody. Brilliant. Yeah, thank you. Right. Great. Take care, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.